Welcome back to Get Goods. This is episode three. In the last video, we talked about staging and committing changes to our local repo. In this video, we're gonna be talking about pushing those changes to an upstream repository, so the remote. And we're also gonna be talking about pulling changes down as well. So I suppose let's get straight into it. So if we do Git log, we can see that we have all these changes that are all locally, but none of them, you know, the repo doesn't know, or the remote, I should say, doesn't know about any of these changes. It's still blank. So to push them, all we need to do is do git push. And this is what you would normally do 99% of the time. However, the first time you push to a specific branch, you actually need to say which branch to push it to. So you'd use dash u, which is shorthand for set upstream branch. We then want to provide the remote, which will almost always be origin. And then we want to provide the name of the upstream branch. It does not have to be the same as the local branch if you don't want it to be, but generally speaking, you do want it to be. <laughs> uh, so we can do that. And you can see it's pushing all these things up. And then we have our branch set up to track origin main. If we're going to get log, we could see the origin main, for me it's in red, for you it might be in a different color, but origin main is set up here. So we have main, which is in green, which is my local branch, and origin main, which is in red, which is the upstream branch. And this is telling me that main and origin main are the same. So my local and remote are the same. If we head over to the repository or the remote and we refresh, we can see that all our files are here. So we have our readme, which GitHub, you know, very kindly uh, renders for us on the homepage. We also have our license, our, ed our editor config, sorry, and our hello.py, which we can read if we do this. And then we don't actually have a trading new line for whatever reason. I actually don't know why that is. I, th I think my, um, I think my black format is broken. It's the problem. <laughs> uh, although it has it here, um, I don't know then. But yeah, either way, all the files, are now on the repository, which is really cool. So people can now, you know, pull them down if they want to, or, you know, if they went to clone the repository, then they get all these files. Speaking of pulling things down, if there are any changes on the repo, I'm actually gonna do one here. So if I go into hello.py and I edit it on here, if you have multiple collaborators, someone else might edit the files, whether they do it in, you know, GitHub's editor, or whether they do it in their own local editor is up to them. In my case, it would be GitHub's editor. But if we say print, uh, ha, you got gnomed. Oh, gnomed, there we go. And we commit these changes and then sure, whatever. That's fine by me, it works well enough. So now if we head back into our local and we do git log, uh, we can see that it actually still says that main and origin main are synced because it doesn't know that they're not synced because we haven't told it that you know, it should actually try and fetch changes. And what you can do is you could simply just do git pull. And this will now pull down the additional changes. So we have, it will tell you, you know, a basic summary of what's changed. So in this case, you have hello.py. This two means that there are two changes. And these two pluses mean that they were both additions. And we now have how you got gnome down here. If we do git log again, we can see our update hello.py. Uh, is here and then we, our main and our origin main are once again synchronized. If you didn't want to pull the changes but instead just wanted to fetch the information regarding them, you could do git fetch. Uh, it's not going to do anything in this instance. But what that will do is it will update all the pointers and stuff without actually pulling down the changes. And then I believe you just do a git merge and uh, that then actually gets them all down. I don't know that for sure. I always just use git pull. I don't know anyone that does git fetch and then git, git merge, to be honest. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about merging, you know, way further on in the series. But I just wanted to say that, you know, that was an option that was available to you. The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that when we pushed uh, to the repository that the tags were not pushed. Uh, so if you know about GitHub, you'll know that uh, any tags come under this releases header. Ooh. Oh, we can actually go a bit further in and there are no tags on the remote repository and that's because tags are not pushed like changes are you have to do it slightly differently and since we do have tags here so we have you know tag v 0.1.0 and v 0.0.1 we want to make sure those are on the on the uh on the remote as well 
So what we can do is we can do git push double dash tags and we don't need to set any sort of branches one because we're pushing with tags and two because the upstream branch is already set. Now if we do that you can see there are no changes but we have you know a record of our tags here. If you come back over here and refresh the page we have our tags here uh, and then we can start exploring them uh, and then you can also on github you know explore from the tag as well. And then you can, you know, if you had releases to make, you can, you know, then push releases based off these tags using this releases tab. But again, this is not a GitHub tutorial. Uh, I'm just showing you all that for context. That's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Before I go, I want to say a thank you to my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mazard Rosherman III for being so generous. If you want to know about five cool optimizations in Python, then make sure to check out Monday's video. But in the meantime, I'll see you around for whatever I do next.